Like Abraham Lincoln, I understand that force may be necessary before mercy. Like Lincoln, I don't relish it. Yet I will do whatever it takes to defend the integrity and freedom of my country. In the speech of President Corazon Aquino during the joint session of U.S. Congress on September 18, 1986, she mentioned about the death of her husband, who happens to be the major political rival of President Ferdinand Marcos and was one of the first to be arrested after the abolition of Congress and declaration of martial law in 1972. Aquino was put through military trial, charged with murder, illegal possession of firearms, and subversion. He endured seven years of incarceration before he was allowed to seek medical treatment in the United States for a heart condition. After three years in exile, he returned to Manila, but was gunned down before he could set foot on the tarmac. His assassination started a chain of events that would eventually lead to the People Power Revolution of 1986. In 1985, President Ferdinand Marcos called for a snap election and Aquino ran for presidency with former Senator Salvador Laurel as a running mate for the position of vice president. After the election on February 1986, the Batasang Pampansa proclaimed Ferdinand Marcos as president and Arturo Tolentino as vice president. Allegations were made of electoral fraud causing Aquino to call for massive civil disobedience which led to People Power Revolution. The People Power Revolution ousted Marcos to Malacanang and his position and made Aquino an access to presidency on February 25, 1986. The Republic of the Philippines was proclaimed on July 4, 1946 with Manuel Rojas as president. Massive rehabilitation and rebuilding out of the devastation brought about by the war was started. In 1972, martial law was declared by then President Ferdinand Marcos. Political repression and economic deterioration during the martial law years resulted in the historic People Power Revolution of February 25, 1986. This led to the proclamation of Corazon C. Aquino as President of the Philippines. President Aquino restored the democratic institutions in the country. A constitution ratified on February 2, 1987, provided for a tri-party system, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. This was the type of government before Marcos declared martial law and adopted a modified parliamentary government. Aquino also restored the freedoms of speech, press, and of assembly. Lastly, mark a new beginning for Filipino and its government. After all the challenges, riots they experienced from the death of President Benigno Aquino Jr. that lead to People Power Revolution and the election for the new president, finally it ended up with democracy that Corazon Aquino made and fight for a way to make the country free from all. This is not all about Corazon Aquino itself that fight for the freedom, but the unity of Filipino people win at all odds. The voice of every Filipino is the most powerful weapon that anyone can use to survive and make a change for the country. In conclusion, Cory Aquino moved triumphantly with an emotional appeal for new aid and support for our country and it has drew on immediate response. She relates the history of her late husband, Pinigno Aquino, whose assassination in August 1983 triggered the peaceful revolution that gives her the task fallen in her shoulders to continue offering the democratic alternative to Filipino people and brought her power, promising that she, like Abraham Lincoln, would strive for peace and ready to fight if necessary to preserve unity and democracy. She encouraged America 
to join as she built a new home for democracy, creating another haven for the oppressed, so it may stand a shining testament for two nations' commitment to freedom. How does this primary source affect the history of Filipino people? The primary source, which is the historic speech of Cory Aquino, serves as an instrument that affects and contributes what our country has become right now. The speech is vital in our history and is a powerful evidence that Cory Aquino has brought honor to our country fighting for our freedom, giving hope to fight for honor, paying the sweats of every man's faces, and preserve democracy on behalf of her husband, restoring full constitutional government, and empower the rights of every free Filipino people that gave an appeal for help managed to sway in our favor, the vote for our emergency aid appropriation. Rebuilding the Philippine economy.